Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry for the weird camera angle because my main camera is run out of battery during the recording, so I had to start over again. Um, so you have to stick to the webcam. Um, so bear with me. So today we're going to talk about the core library of Superior Drummer. Yes, um, no fancy expansion pack or any other drum software. Over the last year since Superior Drummer 3 came out, I got a lot of feedback and read a lot of feedback about the software that people are sometimes struggling with it or complaining about it, that it's, the software is missing or the, the samples are missing some power and punch and all that stuff. And um, people are constantly trying to get their hands on one of the latest expansions. Uh, to get the drum sounds they want. And today I want to address exactly that issue or those issues. I'm going to tell you in this video that you probably just need the core library to achieve any drum sound you want. For this video, I join forces with my good friend and fellow drummer from YouTube, Hoop83 from the Netherlands. Hoop was so kind to send me some a drum performance and a MIDI pack, which I'm going to use in the second part of this video to demonstrate uh, how far you can go with the sounds of Superior Drama 3 and the call library. So thanks again, Hoop, uh, for your help here. Looking forward to show you um, your great drumming to the people. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the problem with the core library, um, basically there are three different um, problems I see looking at the people complaining about the software or having struggles with the software or don't use it that much. So the first thing for me is like sometimes people don't fully understand sample recording. Um, or in other words, they are more used to, let's say, process samples. And that's the problem here. So Period Drama 3, the core library, are almost 100% pure recordings. And that's how drums sound uh, under good and decent microphones in a professional studio. So it's not the problem of Superior Drama 3 that it maybe sound weak to some extent, which a lot of people complain about. The reason is that 90% of the drum samples you hear nowadays, whether it's from Toontrack themselves, or of course Stephen Slade drums, Addictive drums, um, and all the like um, Get Good drums and BFD3, like 90% of them are more or less processed. Most of them very, very much processed. That's the purpose of using samples. You know, you want something that works right off the box, but not superior number three. So, which brings me to point number two of the things I think people are misunderstanding about the software, which is most of the people using Superior Drama 3 do not utilize all the features and functionalities within the software to get the sound they want. So they load up the software and maybe they're playing a little bit with EQ and compression and they still struggle to get the sound right. Um, so that's a problem because the software is so powerful and you can shape the sound and the tone of that software uh, into any direction you can possibly imagine. But of course, you have to use those tools. That's the, the idea behind this software, isn't it? So the thing with a core library, and I think this goes a little bit uh, um, as well for the core library of the predecessor, Superior Drama 2, a core library always tries to, let's say, match any purpose uh, and any genre coming from slow jazz uh, club sounds up to heavy metal and like over the top stadium rock. So when you try to fit every single purpose and genre, maybe sometimes you end up that you don't fit any of them 100%, but that's not the point here. The third thing I see often um, in, on Facebook when I get feedback from users and reading comments is musicians and people using software are usually lazy. That's not a bad thing by any means, but People want quick results, you know, they will lo want to load up the software and there's this weird, let's say, thinking out there in the world that, um, especially in the digital world, um, people expect everything to happen immediately uh, and to work immediately. People don't want to spend, they say, that's a software, it should work immediately. But they've missed the point, especially for the software Superior Drama, which makes Toontrack so unique. And that's the reason I use them the most and prefer them uh, over any other of the products. Because the biggest strength of this software is that you have absolutely 100% full control over the sound. However, at the same time, that's the biggest weakness. Uh, because this is kind of like 3.5 uh, from the issues. 
is people are just sometimes missing mixing skills. So that's not the problem of the users, but you need to understand that the software is not specifically addressed to the common musician, uh, home musician who's just jamming along to some tracks or sitting at the e-drum. So Paper Drama 3 is a 100% pro software um, and is used and utilized by pro audio engineers around the world and musicians who really dive into the software and they can get, get great results. Today, uh, and now we're coming to my good Dutch friend Hoop, who sent me the MIDI performance and a little um, jam along track. I want to show you quickly just two extreme sides. I'm going to take his song and his MIDI performance and I'm going to show you what I did. One fully dry mix. Uh, yes, you can achieve a dry mix from Superior Drama 3. And one more, let's say, open, big rock sound uh, within the same library. Um, of course, I did a lot of mixing in my DAW, but that's not the point here. I just wanted to show you how quickly you can achieve such things when you just use basic functions within the software. So before we start, I'm going to show you just, um, I think, one minute 50 or two minutes play along that Hoop sent me. He recorded himself on video. Uh, he used a preset from the core library. I don't know which preset he used, but just like a quick one to get things started and that I get an idea what he played. The Hoop is an amazing drummer, um, really like a studio drummer attitude. He's very dynamically, he plays a lot of subtle ghost notes and little like nuances on the hi-hat. And so it's a overall great drummer, um, pleasure to work with him. So here's Hoop with his little jam along and the preset he picked from, a random preset he picked from Superior Drama 3. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I had the idea to create two different drum sounds. First, like a really dry, tight, um, like clubby sound, uh, as if you were playing in a small club or maybe uh, maybe in your home studio, which is usually more damned and not so big as the Galaxy Studios here from Superior Drama 3. And the second thing, like the exact opposite almost. Uh, both still with the idea in mind to implement them into the mix. So for the dry version, and you see already here in the top right corner that I created this uh, preset, which is called Hoop Dry. Um, and going to the mixer, you see I did nothing in Superior Drama. That's one of the weaknesses I want to point out here. I think that Superior Drama 3 reacts better with, let's say, Pro plugins and audio engineering or audio processing that you do in the DLW. The plugins from Superior Drama are okay, but I prefer, if I have the choice, the plugins that I used to in my DLW. Um, so, um, however, the software reacts very well to processing. That's the pro here. So, uh, I've picked the IOT kit. Um, because they have a natural, warm, woody sound due to their wooden hoops, but not so overly kind of like punchy, so they're warm. I use this Tama Artwood Maple, uh, which sounds uh, on its own like this. So already very fat and like low tuned, that's what I wanted to achieve here. So the first thing you want to do, and this is um, something that especially in this library is very important. The room is so tremendously big, you have to keep in mind or have to try to bring down the ambience if you want to achieve um, a drier sound. Because even on the direct microphones from the toms, the snare and or even the overheads, which are really positioned directly over the drummer, uh, on the recording, they capture the size of the room, of course. There is some reverb um, and, and, and noise and sound coming from the walls back to the microphones. So a way to achieve that, um, first of all, I mean, you see, I just picked the overhead condenser microphone here. I picked no of the um, room microphones. Um, because the room, even like the ambience near, as they call it, is already so big in sound, um, I wanted to get rid of it. So I just used the overhead condenser microphone. And one of the biggest things you can achieve here, go to the right and you see this box level envelope releases. And I brought this down to 40.6%. What this does is that uh, it's acting kind of like a transient designer a little bit. So 
um, as the name suggests, the, the envelope of the sounds or the decay of the sound over time is reduced to 40% 40, 40 of its original state. So let me just quickly solo the override here, bring it back to 100%, and then I bring it down to 40 again so you hear what I mean. So especially on the snare drum and on the on the toms and sometimes on the kick, you hear like how the sustain is dramatically shorter than before. So this is already acting like it, as I said, as a transient designer. You make the room smaller with that uh, setting. And the cool thing is you cannot just use this on room microphones, which makes the most sense and the most notable uh, noticeable difference. But you can as well use it on direct microphones. For instance, here on the toms, I brought it down to 50% um, because the toms in the call library, they all ring out forever. Um, I wanted to reduce it here. So I brought down the toms to 50%, the snare bottom even to 34% to get rid of any leakage or too much leakage coming from the toms and the kick, um, the kick drum, the snare top to 50% as well. So that's what I did in the mixer, just using the overhead, bringing down uh, the envelope to something 40, 50, 30%. Of course, I did this during the mix of the song to get an idea what sounds best. But play with those settings and bring down the envelopes and you will get kind of like a small clubby uh, drama, uh, studio drama sound. On the drums themselves, um, the second thing, um, what I did additionally here uh, on the toms, you see here on the envelope and offset setting, this goes for the instruments globally for no matter in which channel they appear, while the envelope setting here in the mixer window just affects the individual particular channel you use to change the envelope, in this case just the overhead. So here um, on the right side um, you can dial in the release setting here and even shape the curve which will determine um, how the ring or the sustain of the tone um, ends and fades out. Uh, so let me hit this floor tom here and you will hear what I mean. In comparison to again, so it's dying quickly, um, as if you kind of like would dampen the the tom a little bit. You can even play, of course, with the tuning, but that's what I did with every single um, tom here for the bow, uh, for the tom toms and for the floor tom. You can do this with the snare with the hi hat, so you can really dial in the envelope of the sound, and all of a sudden you get a rather dry sound. Then I send all those channels uh, just the ones here I showed you, so just the overheads and some direct microphones, into my DAW. And here I used, let me just maximize the window. Here I used, uh, for the first example, um, just the BX console N, which is an emulation of a Neve console from Plugin Alliance Brainworks, um, because I wanted to have that warm, kind of like 70, 80, uh, Neve sound. So I don't want to go over the processing here. That's maybe something for another video. And it doesn't make it doesn't the point here of this video. So I processed all the drums in my DAW and finally uh, it ended up sounding like this. Hoop, take it away. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
And as a second example, I went the opposite way. Uh, this time the preset is called Hoop Rock um, and I went for the Pearl Masterworks. Of course, I went for the Tama Belbri snare and going to the mixer tab here, you see I used um, way more channels, especially um, some of the ambient channels. Not every one of them, but I, you see I went for the ambient snare. Uh, I went for the center channel, which is usually great. And you see I just enabled the snare drum here because I use this sometimes as a additional reverbish effect. Um, and additionally here, I used a sample which comes with Superior Drama, one of the electronic or pre-processed samples. Um, so this is the mega snare. To just give this Tama Brabe snare, which is already one of the most punchiest and loudest snare, a bit more impact. Uh, and on the kick drum, I went for the meat kick, which is a pre-processed sample. And I did the same. Now I routed out more channels and this time, uh, here the second line, um, I went, because I wanted something punchy, I went fully SSL style. So the SSL E channel on every uh, channel here, the plugin itself um, is similar build than the BX console N, but SSL just gives you way more punch in your face. Um, I did some parallel processing and added a bit of reverb and this is how it ended. Hoop, it's your take again. Two, one, two, three, four. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments, do you use the core library? Do you like it? Do you don't like it? And if not, for what reasons, I would be highly interested to discuss with you guys and maybe get some input for another videos. Um, thanks again, Hoop. Um, shout out to you guy. Um, amazing performance. Really had fun working with your track. I'm out for this time. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great time making music. I'm out. Bye bye.